Good morning, everyone. Michael McGillicuddy here with Natural Law on the Move. All right, we've got a great topic for today. Today, I'm going to bring up the notion that the occult is all around us, hidden in plain sight. And at first, your, your reaction may be, that's not true. Nothing's not around me. I know everything that's around me. Well, I'm going to bring up something that might open your eyes just a little bit. But first, let's define our terms. When I first heard the word occult back in 2011, a very strange girlfriend of a friend was trying to tell me about it, but she was high on a number of drugs and she came across very creepy. She just got to get into the occult. I'm getting the heck away from there. <clears throat> so, in 2018, early, I heard Mark Passio's Anarchy and the Occult speech at Anarchapuco, and it was fantastic. The best speech I heard there of all four days. The clearest speech, even my wife, who is Chinese, who is with me, she said that was the one speech that I could understand. Super clear, super well done. Great job, Mark. And what Mark explained is that the occult, like the word anarchy, has a misrepresented connotation. The word occult means hidden. It does not mean evil. It does not mean magic. It does not mean sorcery. The word itself simply means hidden. So occult knowledge is hidden knowledge. If something has been occulted, it has been hidden away. In Latin, and I got a perfect score on the National Latin Exam in 2004, so I know a little bit about that type of thing. The word occult comes from the verb occulto, occultare, a verb which means to hide from sight or to conceal. It comes, <clears throat> or it's related to the Latin word oculus, which means one's eyes, means, you know, your eyes, like that, binoculars, uh, I don't know, lots of words that have that root in them. <clears throat> so occult knowledge is simply knowledge that has been hidden away, and it is everywhere. And the people who are in currently running this shit show, they know a lot about it. They won't let on, but they do. And if you don't believe me, type in, to maybe not type in on YouTube because they censor the results, type in on a search engine like DuckDuckGo, Type the word YouTube, Christine Lagarde, numerology. It's kind of a mouthful. Christine, spelled normally, C-H-R-I-S-T-I-N-E, Lagarde, L-A-G-A-R-D-E. She was at that time head of the International, was the, I think it was the International Monetary Fund. Now she's the head of the European Central Bank, I do believe. And she gave a speech to the National Press Club in 2014, and for about seven minutes, she went over occult numerology of the year 2014, of the year 2014. Very, very interesting. Why would she devote seven minutes of her speech to explaining that to these reporters? So go ahead and watch that, and then tell yourself that, no, that doesn't matter, it has nothing to do with us. But let's get to an occult reference that you use every day of the week and you've probably been unaware of it. I sure was until I had it pointed out to me. Did you know that the days of the week, the seven days of the week, correspond precisely to the ancient seven heavenly bodies? The sun, the moon, and the five planets that we can see with the naked eye in which the ancients could see unaided by a telescope. That is Mercury, Venus, the moon, we already said the moon, Mercury, Venus, Mars, Jupiter, and Saturn, and the sun and the moon bring it up to seven. Each day of the week corresponds to one of those, one of those heavenly bodies, one of those planets or stars or, yeah, and some would say it embodies the energy of that particular body, but that's something deeper. Let's just go into, let's show it. All right, so we start with the day of the week. What's the first day of the week? Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. So let's start with Sunday. It's pretty obvious. Sun day. It's the sun's day. Monday is also pretty obvious. That comes, I mean, that's moon day. We have Sunday first, then we have moon day. What about Tuesday? 
Who's Mr. Two? I don't know Two. Let's look at it in Spanish and it'll make more sense. Domingo, lunes, martes. M-A-R-T-E-S. Mars day. Martes. Okay? Let's continue in Spanish. After martes, we have miércoles. Miércoles. Mercury day. In French, it's pronounced mercredi. My French accent is not so good, so I don't know it as well. But mercredi, the day of Mercury. Thursday. In Spanish, that's, what is it? Jueves. Right? Yes, jueves, jueves, jueves. In French, it's duty. Jupiter's day. In English, it's Thursday or Thor's day. You know, Thor with the big dude with the hammer. He corresponds to the the Roman god Jupiter, who corresponds to the Greek god Zeus, which has an interesting connotation or interesting. Uh, it sounds a lot like Deus. Zeus is how they would say it in ancient Greek. Zeus, Deus. Also, Deus. Anyway, uh, Thursday, Friday. In the Germanic tradition, that was Freya's day. It might be Germanic or Norse, I can't remember exactly. But it's Freya's day. She was the goddess of love and beauty, which corresponds to Venus. And in Spanish, Friday is Viernes, Venus day. In French, it's Vendredi. It's Venus's day on Friday. And then Saturday, that's pretty easy. That's Saturn's day, Saturday. It's Saturday, Saturn's day. So we have Sunday, it's corresponding to the sun. Monday to the moon, Tuesday corresponding to Mars. In the um, in the Norse tradition, there was a god named Tvi. I don't know if I say it right. T V I Tvi's day, and he corresponded to Mars. So Tvi's day became Tui's day. V and U were interchangeable back then. Tui's day, Tui's day, to Tui's day, T U E S D A Y. Tvi's day became Tui's day, Tuesday. And then Wednesday is the uh, is Mercury's day. <clears throat> and in the Norse tradition, when's, uh, Mercury was Wotan. So Wotan is Mercury. That's why it's Wednesday. And yeah, Wotan was the sort of sorcerer figure, the, the, the messenger of the god. He sort of looks like Gandalf in some pictures of, or some represent, representations of him. So we've got Wotan's day, and then we have Thor's day, that's Thursday, that's Jupiter's day. Finally, we have Friday. Friday, Freya's day, Venus's day. And Saturday, that's pretty easy, Saturn's day. Boom, did you know that? Very, very interesting, huh? And you say it every single day of the week, boop, boop. So that type of knowledge, that's occult knowledge, that's hidden knowledge, that's something that's there, but it wasn't apparent, it was hidden away or concealed. And most of the time it's concealed in plain sight, as Mark Twain would say. So that's that. And you know what's really even more interesting is that the order of the days of the week is the same in just about all of the ancient cultures, even though they were spread apart by a lot of geography. In Europe, I mean, it's the same. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Sunday, Moon Day, Mars Day, Mercury Day, Jupiter Day, Venus Day, Saturday, Saturn's Day. Even in ancient China, the days of the week corresponded exactly to this way of reckoning time. I lived in China for a little while, so I studied it. Currently, because the satanic communists are in power and they want to totally occult this knowledge and not have anybody have a connection to spirit or source energy, the, the days of the week is day one, day two, day three, day four, day five, day six, day six, day sun. Zhou Yi, Zhou Er, Zhou San, Zhou Si, Zhou Wu, Zhou Ba 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 or Xing Qi Yi, Xing Qi, Xing Qi Er, Xing Qi San, Xing Qi Si, Xing Qi Wu, Xing Qi Liu, and then Xing Qi Ri, that's Sunday, the day of the sun. Uh, but ancient China, they had a different way of, of speaking those days, and it was Ri Bao Ri, the day of the sun. Ri Bao Yue, the day of the moon, corresponding to Monday, exactly after the sun. Ri Bao Huo, Tuesday. You can look it up on Wikipedia. Look up ancient Chinese calendar system. It corresponds exactly to ours. Very interesting, huh? Let's do this. And then we got Ri Bao Shui. That's the day of Mercury. Ri Bao uh, Mu. That's for Jupiter. And then Ri Bao Jin. Ri Bao Tu. 
corresponding to Venus and Saturday. So that is very interesting. That's occult knowledge hidden in plain sight. We're going to go deeper into this because there is some hidden forces at work, just sort of like the wind or gravity is a hidden force. You can't see it, but it's still operating in our lives. We're going to go deeper into this, but that's just a little quick hitter about some occult knowledge, hidden knowledge that was right in front of you for your entire life. And you more likely, if you're like me, you missed it. So that's me, Michael McGillicuddy, Natural Law on the Move. Thank you, everybody. Have a wonderful day.